All right, everyone, we are going to move fast because I'm doing two lectures in one here so that you don't have to watch two different videos. Um, but essentially, we're going to look at criticism and then how do we break down a piece of literature. So um, criticism that you use is going to be really different based on what your methodology is for approaching literature. So critical theory is basically how we approach literature. And what it's going to look at is how do we break down literature and what do we value as far as analyzing the literature? So new criticism is really the traditional way of looking at literature. It's what is on the page. So you look at what's said and how it's said and you're really not worried about anything outside of that. You're not worried about the author. You're not worried about the historical situation. You're only looking at what is on the page. Um, and this is probably what you were doing when you were in high school. It's think, looking at specifically what is the theme? What is the symbolism? What is the, the tone? on this page. You don't worry about anything else outside of that. Um, deconstruction is the opposite. Deconstruction takes what's there and breaks it down so that ha instead of unifying it, how it falls apart. So basically they look at what's missing or what's the failure, or what's the arbitrariness of what's, what's not being said. Um, so look for conflicting or contradictory meanings. So here's for example, if you wrote Love is Like a Rose, the new critical theory would be something that's positive, sweet, delicate, um, um, you know, all these different sort of positive images. Deconstruction takes the opposite viewpoint. What's not being said is the irony that love is like a rose, meaning it's thorny, it's painful, it's fleeting, it's going to die. Um, so that's what deconstruction is. Historicism essentially, or new historicism, looks at all of the influences around the text. So it looks at the social, the cultural, the historic, and the political context for the work. Um, when you get into advanced lit classes, you're going to do a lot of this because you're looking at historical pieces that have influences. Um, so it looks at what was happening as far as culture, what was the mindset, what was going on as the belief system, and then how do those, those things and the events of the time period influence the work. So um, if you look at a story set in Germany like uh, Mouse, for example, the, the graphic novel, um, you're going to understand that there's obviously different things involved. There's historical records, there's um, you know, interviews and accounts and things that would influence the understanding of the work. So you look at those beliefs and what are the values of you know, both sides of the period, something like Anne Frank, right? Um, and how those beliefs kind of came to be. Biographical looks at the author. That's very different than new historicism. Biographical looks at what is happening in the author's life that's influencing the work. Um, you really need to be careful, though, because not everything that happens in an author's life necessarily fits with the work. Um, Ray Bradbury wrote about sci-fi, for example. Not everything about his life is going to fit with what he's writing about in sci-fi. Um, but someone like Charlotte Perkins Gilman, who wrote The Yellow Wallpaper, she went through a, an experience that influenced what she wrote about. She wrote about um, a specific medical treatment for postpartum depression that she actually experienced and why it was basically a problem. Um, so it's really a part of the work, but it's not necessarily all of the work. You can also look at psychoanalytical, a psychoanalytical criticism um, where you look at sort of symbolic meaning and language that explains intents. So look at motive and action. This is really about characters here. So what is happening with the characters? Um, something like Kafka's Metamorphosis would fit with this. Um, Sigma Freud is used a lot, so it's the id and the ego and the superego, and obviously I'm not a psych major, but essentially what the idea here is, is that the id is looking at the, the, the basic instinct, the, the unconscious um, impulses and desires. The ego is the middle ground. It's the I. It's what kind of fluctuates between the unrealistic id and then what's the real or the external, which is the superego. Um, and the superego is this higher self, it's justice, it's society, it's what's outside of yourself. Um, so psychoanalytical could be really interesting if you're really into that sort of, um, you know, meaning in the mind. Marxist ideas are a little different. Marxist basically explores the ideas of power and inequality. So Marxist looks at how is society stratified, who has power, and how is that power maintained or how does it um, fluctuate between different social classes and groups? And it looks at the disparities between social classes a lot. Um, it fights for sort of the, 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 the little guy. Um, 
And it looks at lots of ideas of pol politics and evolution and revolution within politics. Um, feminist gender and queer studies is um, a really fascinating field. Um, and it looks at sort of ideas of oppression and disparity, but also um, kind of differences in, in treatment in terms of social mores. So it's looking at gender roles of women and men. So ideas of femininity and masculinity. It's looking at ideas of homosexuality, um, of LGBTQ rights, um, the effects of these. Is looking at particular sexual stereotypes and meaning. Um, it's a really fascinating field. And then lastly, reader response. That's reader response is really the basically where you as the reader have a, a reaction to the work. Um, so how does the ideal reader respond to the work? It's, it's most common, but it also can have a lot of fallacies. So you really need to be careful about judging a work based on your emotional response. So you don't want to have an analysis based on I liked or didn't like this work. It needs to be a much higher uh, analysis than that. Okay. So the other lecture real quick is reading and writing about literature. So reading and writing about literature um, is very um, nuanced, but not as difficult as a lot of people like to think. So when we read and write about literature, you are creating an argument. You're arguing something about the meaning of the literature and what it signifies in the larger world. So when we have a story, we don't ever just read a story to read a story. We look at what the meaning behind the story and what is it that the author is trying to do or say with this work in a particular way. So we just talked about all these different um, schools of thought of how you approach literature. And we're going to really look at new criticism here because it's most commonly used um, in our in sort of modern society. So in new criticism, you're going to look at things like theme, setting, symbolism, um, the figurative language used, so how is the imagery, similes, metaphors, all these different things created. Tone, so what is the overall impression of the story. Characterization, how are the characters developed, what do they look like, um, what do they sound like, how do they change or grow or don't change, or what archetype do they fit. And um, things like irony, so irony will be like actions, events, and words that are don't fit with what you expect to be coming. So basically how to read a story is very simple. Read with an open mind. So go in not, not having a preconceived notion of what to expect from the story. Preview it, just like you know how to do. Read slowly and carefully. Don't gloss over certain areas. Um, look at the literal first. So look at what is there. What is the plot? What is the characters? What are the events? And then reread or re-skim with an understanding of looking at interpretation. So take what's there and then start applying meaning to it based on the different schools of thought that you have. Um, if you don't understand, don't worry. Um, stories are dense and they take a lot of time to, to kind of work through and that's why literature is wonderful because there is so much meaning that you can have. Lastly, you wanna really take notes as you read and then use those notes to identify the things that you'll be talking about in your essay. So themes and patterns and different things you wanna bring up. Analysis itself is where a lot of students get confused because they think that they're saying something but not necessarily actually saying what it is they think they're saying. So analysis basically takes a story and says, this is what I see as the meaning and here's why it matters. So you not only have to say what you see, but why it's important. Why does it matter that we see that, that viewpoint or that idea in the story? Um, so a few things to remember, really the basics kind of to look for when you start analyzing a story, the setting, um, with time, place, and circumstances that the story is taking place. So what's happening around the people in this story? Um, what is influencing their actions? What's influencing their beliefs and what and in turn creates the plot? The characters, of course, incredibly important. Look at their actions, look at their thoughts and their ideas and their speech, what they say and how they're sort of created by the author, looks, attributes, different things. Um, it's really important to look at the character development throughout the story. Point of view. Um, we have lots of point of views, but usually it's first or third. First person is I, and that's where you know the inside the, na the narrator's head. Um, so 
you get to see their thoughts, their actions, their motivations. Third person is can be limited omniscient or omniscient. Limited omniscient means that you don't see necessarily inside everyone's head. Omniscient means you you are sort of like um, you're able to see inside their heads and know what they're thinking and know what's going on, um, which is a very different point of view. Plot. Plot is really important. Um, you have to analyze what's happening in the plot as far as sort of the dramatic arc of what's happening. The conflict is the problem that has to be resolved. So conflict is man versus man, man versus society, man versus nature, or man versus self. Um, climax is where everything kind of comes to a head and kind of, this is, you know, in the, in the action movie, this is where the big explosions happen and then a resolution follows. And I'm going to show you the dramatic arc in just a minute, so keep that in mind. The theme. The theme is the major idea that the author is trying to talk about. What is it that they're trying to say? So are they talking about friendship? Are they talking about the importance of equal rights between men and women? Are they talking about the idea of depression? There's a lot of things they could be talking about. Theme is really, really important. Um, and you don't want to just say the theme is X. You want to be able to back it up. So you want to look at things like the titles. How does that influence the, the idea of the theme? How do the characters influence the theme? Or do they change or do they stay the same? Um, what are the statements about the conflict? How does that influence the theme? So look at these elements, these symbols, these figures of speech. All these different attributes together help you understand what the theme is. Um, so here is just a basic Freytag's um, dramatic arc. And this is what I was talking about where... You have exposition. This is where you get the background of what's going on. This is the introduction to the story. Then you have the rising action. So this is where all the things start happening. And it all is up to, like I said, if this was an action movie, this is the big, you know, explosion where they have the car chase and everything else. Everything goes haywire. So everything kind of comes to a head. After that, you have the falling action, which is kind of everything coming back together, all the pieces falling back into place. And then you have the denouement, which is like the resolution, which is where everything kind of wraps up. Um, and it doesn't always wrap up neatly. Just because you have a cliffhanger doesn't mean it's not a denouement. It is. It's just a different kind of resolution. And then if you look at a modern story, um, this is, I mean, it's really the same information. It's the background. The conflict happens in the rising action. The crunch or where everything kind of comes together and happens is at the climax. The outcome of the climax is the falling action. And the lesson learned is the resolution. So the point is, literary analysis is really, really important because you're taking one or more aspects of the work and you're analyzing it and you're telling your audience the significance or why it matters. Why does this work matter? And another thing I really want to keep in mind when you're writing, keep it in present tense. Don't say, um, uh, the Wizard of Oz said, you would say the Wizard of Oz, Oz says blah on page 14. Um, and that's just a little tidbit to kind of help you out. All right, you guys have done a really good job. Go ahead and move on to your next assignment.